Hello friends and fans, welcome back to this central control tutorial on the basics. Today we're going to be taking a deeper look into the control mapping window, so let's not waste any time and let's get straight into it. As you can see, I have my project from last tutorial with my APC Mini, and this time an instance of vMix. So let's go take a look on how we're going to map some of these controls on my APC Mini. As you can see, I've got my controller here, and if I just go ahead and press some of the buttons, you can see the control mapping button is lighting up in blue, indicating which device in the project this is. So let's go ahead and click on that. We're now in the control mapping window. Starting from the left, we can see a big old list of all of the buttons on this controller. If I use this drop down menu here, I can go to faders. If there was any other type of control, like access control or an encoder, I'd also see it in this menu here. Right next to that, I have the jump to control toggle. Now this is super handy to try and find a control on your device as quick as possible for an existing mapping or mapping something new. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can map a control and some different ways of doing that. In the middle, we have a drop down menu for all of the different devices in the project. In this project, we only have two. We have an instance of vMix, which we're going to map. So let's click on that. I can see all of my different commands, which are available to map to the controller here as well as a search box to try and find specific commands. I have a plus button to add commands to whatever button is selected. And just as easy as that, I can click on the command and press the minus button to remove things. To the right of that, I have a up arrow and a down arrow to move the commands in the list. Let's map the preview and the program row on this APC Mini. In my instance of vMix, I have only four inputs, which we'll be mapping today. A nice little clip. And we're just going to search for the set mix preview command. I'm going to wind the input number back to one. You can do that with the scroll wheel or just with the up and down buttons. And we'll start off by mapping it using the quick assign function. Now, quick assign is really good for bulk mapping a bunch of stuff. And if I turn it on, I can click the first button on my controller and go ahead and just click the plus button. And now we have our controls mapped that easily. In something like the set mix preview command, it will automatically increment the input number. So each button correlates to each input in vMix, making it really easy to map things quickly. If you want to go even quicker than that, we can use the rapid assign function. What I'm going to do is hold shift, select all of them, delete all commands. We can do the same thing with copy and pasting commands, holding the shift and then clicking whatever button we want to copy and paste. In the same way that I can copy and paste commands on buttons on the same device, I can copy and paste commands into other devices. So let's say I had a long list of commands, which took a while to set up and I want to transfer it to a new device, it's as easy as right-clicking that button again and pasting it onto the new device. This time, instead of using quick assign, I will do the exact same thing. Hold shift, select the first four buttons, right-click that and assign commands. And in the exact same fashion as quick assign, automatically incrementing the input number, I've just assigned all four buttons here to my vMix set mix preview. To the right of my commands list, I have my parameters inspectors box. Now this varies on commands and devices, so you'll have to get familiar with what parameters are available for each device that you're using and the commands used in that device. In this case, when I'm setting my mix program or preview in vMix, I'm able to select my input number and the mix that I'm trying to affect. In another example, being auto mix, I'm able to select my mix and then the transition number. So this really varies on what commands you're using on the device. Let's now get something working in vMix. I'm going to start by mapping my faders. So let's go across to the faders section, click on fader one, and then find the set mixer level command. Make sure input one is selected, turn on quick assign and chuck them faders into the mapping. Now that we've done our faders, let's do the buttons just as easily. I'm going to go back to the button section, go to the first button, start by doing our program row. So let's do set mix program, input number one, so a quick sign on again, do those four buttons on the first row. Now I'm going to turn on my jump to control to find out where the second row of buttons lay. Here it is 2.1 and we're going to do set mix preview. Make sure that's turned back to one and do the exact same thing. There we have it. We have our preview row, our program row, and then the audio faders. Let's jump into vMix. There's our preview. And we have our faders, physical controls now, right on the APC. As you can see with the vMix device, the button feedback is automatically mapped to the APC. So that's one less thing we have to worry about. Let's say we have trouble with one of the buttons and we want to block the execution. There's a lesser known feature in central control where if I go to the button that I want to block, let's say matrix 1.2, right click, I can click block execution. 
Now this will temporarily stop this button from sending any commands out to the devices. And the same can be done blocking the feedback. I find this especially useful in the troubleshooting process so I can toggle commands on and off and figure out what's doing what. That's about it from me. As Central Control is quite a modular piece of software, device mappings can vary from project to project. So if you have any questions, be sure to join the Central Control Facebook group and uh, drop any questions you have in there, myself or Joe or any members of the community will get back to you and uh, try and be as helpful as possible. Thanks for watching.